Hello and welcome back to the Performance Kitchen. This afternoon I'm joined by Bath Rugby Prop and human giant Max Lahif. <laughs> Max, tell us what you're going to cook today. So today we're just going to make a relatively simple dish. It's basically a Thai beef noodle salad, but I've basically substituted the beef with venison steaks, leg steaks. Cool. Uh, how would we go about making this? So, <clears throat> first up, we're going to prep the veggies, a lot of dicing, a lot of ninja skills, and then we're going to go with um, the dressing as well. That's a little bit of alchemy. And then we'll um, have that prepped. We'll go over to the grill and smash the steaks on, get those done. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. much there. Where, where should we start? Let's start with... What, 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 what are your skills? Uh, I mean, I can, I'm not still got my fingers, so I can sort of chop yeah. and sort of dice. All right, cool. So I'll leave you with cucumbers. So basically, okay. uh, just dice them down the middle. Yeah. Peel them, and then gut the uh, all the watery stuff out of the seeds. Okay. Yeah. I reckon awesome. I could just about do that. Um, uh, can just I get you another chopping board? Yeah, get me another chopping board. Yeah. Somewhere without me tripping on others. Oh, and then we need like. Do a, you want to grab that massive one just there? Oh, sweet. Yeah. So. When would you typically have this meal? This seems like a sort of recovery kind of knife. dish. Uh, we need another knife on the wall just behind you. Uh, yeah, so I'd have this pretty much um, towards the back end of the week before the game, recovery. Um, like it's got a nice collection of carbs and all sorts, like all sorts of other goodness, good amount of protein. Yeah. Um, and it just tastes real delicious. So this is a sort of recovery meal towards the end of the week, but before a game, you'd have this a couple of days before a game. Yeah, I'd have like, I'd have most like on a Thursday, this would be my general go-to or a Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. And then um like towards like at the beginning of the week I'm not really eating so many carbs. I'm trying to be a bit cleaner. Yeah. And then I can sort of load up for the game. Okay. So yeah. you are one of the few English players that's ever gone abroad to play. Oh yeah, yeah. So I had a I had not a... many not many guys really make the trip down down under to have a crack at the Super League. Yeah. The Super Rugby even. Did you notice a huge change in, I mean, you've spoken before about the attitude, there was a huge difference in attitude between the younger players out there and what you have out here. Was there a big change in sort of diets, obviously the climate out there being nothing like the summers or the winters we have here? So, I struggle to keep weight yeah. quite a lot there. As a prop, I'm trying to keep between about 113 and 117 yeah. kilograms and like the heat and the like, intense amount of like load for more running keeping the ball and play more and stuff so yeah. and especially just the training in general it was it was just a lot more running less sort of weightlifting, more running and um yeah so i i just having to smash like extra eggs in and wherever i could it, it got yeah it took me by surprise it yeah. was just so so hot in melbourne during the summer so the pre-season was a lot longer as well yeah so just awful amounts of running no, i can imagine yeah i mean a lot of people <clears throat> say that the sort of southern hemisphere style of rugby is coming in do you find now at bath it is a lot more athleticism rather than just being massive like you're yeah. sort of smashing into people so the the game in the premiership's gone so the ball and play's gone up the time of ball and play yeah so like the the kind of demands on the athletes playing in the premiership especially guys in the type five the bigger athletes yeah who are traditionally sort of more kind of slower larger gentlemen yeah um well they've changed a lot especially the last like 10, 15 years. So like, now you're finding there's a lot of kind of guys who would have been, would have been back rowers playing in the front row and like locks who can play back row the, at like an international level, like guys like Mario Toji and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it just adds, its, it just lends itself to a more kind of free flowing running game. And the new coaches I've got down at Bath are like from the Crusaders. Yeah. Uh, Todd Blackadder and Tabo Matson, and they brought their like Kiwi philosophy. They're quite new additions to the team down Bath, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. This is our first season. They're all, they're awesome, but lots changed since they got down. Like the way we train and stuff is very much more sort of hem southern hemisphere yeah. kind of philosophy of attacking, running rugby. Am I am I chopping these even remotely close to how? That's perfect, expecting? mate. That's yeah. exactly how we want them. Yeah. Oh, cool. all right. Just been out a bit fresh in the middle. Oh, cool. So. Since you've been, obviously you've been you've been at the top of elite rugby essentially since the age of nineteen. Have you noticed a huge change in rugby players' diets over the last sort of five or six years? Have been, I think is it much more healthy, or is there more of a focus on a particular sort of I don't know what the word you could say is a particular sort of philosophy about food now? 
you know, it's not just about putting on tons and tons of calories and eating loads and loads of protein. It's about sort of eating more sort of sensibly, I suppose, as you can see. So, yeah. You know, when you but, think about those old guys you're playing at what, you know, they probably thought nothing about putting on weight just by eating, drinking tons of Guinness. Yeah, exactly. Like, those guys were animals, yeah, party <laughs> animals. Um, but, yeah, no, it's definitely changed, like, I think the image of just professional sports in general and rugby being professional for longer has made it so that guys have now taken it very seriously because the money goes up, therefore your, the pressure on your performance goes up, therefore yeah. you scrutinise every element of how you can be a better athlete. Yeah. And um, don't get me wrong, there's still guys like the Polynesian guys, the Big Islanders, who just, they'll just eat their vitamins, KF and C all yeah. the time, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah. Definitely, especially academy boys, like they're being told and taught how to look after themselves better. When I first started, we had guys having horrific diets, like <laughs> like a mug of spaghetti hoops and Jeez. a bag of Doritos, and then they're expected to go out and perform. And But when you're that young, you can get away with it, but yeah. especially as you get older and you're trying to like look after yourself, it's very important that I think what you do to fuel yourself is taken care of. and. There's a lot of that that's being drilled into younger players nowadays, yeah. Do you think um, sort of younger academy players, obviously, you know, think of people like Mario Toji, who's only sort of broke into the, the, sort of the scene, as it were, you know, in his early 20s, he's still, still really, really young, but he's an absolute giant. And so many younger players are so big. I think last year, Nick Evans, the Quinns player, said, you know, it's not really sustainable for kids that young to be that large. Do you think coming, the kids coming through the academy are sort of getting too big too quickly? I've not thought about that. So he's thinking the load of being that huge at that yeah, like young an age. Yeah, like a human, you know, the, the body at 17 years old can't really deal with being that giant. I think it's know. each their own, yeah. I, I suppose it depends on the person. I think Mario Turgi's a particularly big, like, frame. Yeah. Like, if you see him, he's not, like, overly muscle-bound. He doesn't look like a big, kind of, roided-up freak. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> but I know like, what you mean, like, I think the wear and tear on any professional sport though is, it's always going to take its toll, like, mm. there's a grind. If you're going every day trying to be the best you could be, you're hitting the weights, you're hitting the running, and rugby's quite a, an abrasive sport, and 30 game season, running into large blokes with bad intentions is going to yeah. get you in trouble, no matter who you are. So, even if you're particularly fit and you're doing everything you can to look after yourself, there's going to be some kind of degeneratives. Mm. issues on your body so I sort of get what you're saying but like I, think I, think it, I don't think you can really avoid it I yeah. mean, everyone's their own case do you know what I mean and being a prop being that you're you know you're in the you're in the middle of getting everyone getting smashed to bits and the yeah. sort of controversy around concussion and head injuries has sort of exploded in the last couple of years yeah is there ever something that's preyed on your mind or because we had a couple of um, league guys in here and they just said, yeah, it happens, but it's just part of the sport to get on with it. Yeah. This and is, is exactly, that's the attitude that most rugby players have. I think this is true, yeah. You've got to... There's a risk you, in every there's, sport. There's, exactly. And it's an element, I think, for the lifestyle, it's a sacrifice that you're kind of willing to make, yeah. I think. Well, you've got, to, you've got to make that answer for yourself. But I think as long as players are told the full story, like mm. the risks, everything that can happen, um, I think it's fine. But... In rugby league, it's a bit different. Also, there's the huge 10 meter run ups, and you're just trying to have a mong off. But obviously, it's still in rugby union as well. Um, I think the like the way they're policing it now, the HIAs and stuff, yeah. is helping a lot. Um, so, going back to rugby, obviously, like I said, you've been at the top, essentially at the top level of English rugby for a while now. What's it like walking out of places like the Rec and walking out of places, you know, like. Franklin Gardens, you know, 20, 30,000 people either cheering you on or screaming at you, telling you you're rubbish. Um, I'll take one of those. Yeah, I'll take one, yeah, there you go. Um, I don't I, I like does it all. Get to sort of, does it get to you or do you enjoy sort of... No, you, you love it all. I think, I don't think there's a player I know who doesn't like, who doesn't like the hostility. Really? I mean... So the more they jeer, yeah, the more you enjoy you it. Love, you love the hostility. Like going to Welford Road. Yeah like Leicester, Full House, and they're just screaming at you, willing you to just die. It's <laughs> awesome. It's so nice. I, I really, it's like the, one of the things you love about rugby, going to places like that and competing against like great club teams. Yeah. Um, Stad Mail in Toulon, that was an amazing yes. experience. Um, the last place you want to go are places like uh, the, the um, 
what was it called? The Kazam Stadium where Welsh were playing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no one was there. Yeah, no one's there. It's just, yeah, that's just, can't get much stimulation out of that. No. But, um, and then the wreck. The wreck's funny because I made my premiership debut there and um, we won away. Did and you I was score like, on your debut as well? No, for, for Bath I did. Oh, yeah. right. But for, um, for London Irish. Irish. Um, and it was an amazing experience and I just fell in love with the wreck then. Like, I just think it's so intimate, like really in the like It's in a beautiful heart location as yeah, well, isn't exactly. it? exactly. Amazing backdrop. And the, the supporters are quite fanatical as well. Yeah. Right. Um, What's right. next? So we've chopped everything. Uh, now we've got to make the, we'll make this. Get some of make this out the of the way. So I'm just putting a little bit of olive oil in. What's this? What's again in this dressing? Sorry, olive oil? A little bit of olive oil, just a, a little bit, bit just to make oil. it kind of, get like a nice texture out of it. And then, um, form as well. Oh, where's the little, where's the, just use this. Then we're just going to add some palm sugar, which you can buy any like specialty. This is like a specialty Thai ingredient, but yeah. most supermarkets will have it. So add about that much. Um, this is very much a tinkering thing. Like, do you want to come in and get? A, we'll get you a close up of you making the, the yeah. sauce. So yeah, juice the limes. About three is fine. Um, rolling them out first is pretty key. Some like really, when they're sold fresh, they're quite tough. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. good. I might just put a switch to make this as well. So, obviously, we, we spoke that you've got to maintain like a serious amount of. So I've never opened it. You've got to maintain like a huge weight. What does a typical day of food like look for you? Are you in the morning? You know, so, in the morning, we've got like. Just um, steak in the morning and then steak and eggs in the afternoon and then steak and eggs and steak in the evening. So, basically, it starts off with a pretty typical breakfast. Yeah. Which is like um, eggs, sausages bacon and the chefs there try and make it sort of more healthy put well, a healthy spin on it you say a typical breakfast you're obviously are you having you know, when people say eggs and sausages they might mean like yeah, two so eggs like, and right, a sausage okay. are you in having a like large amount of quality <laughs> yeah so like three sausages big amount of scrambled eggs yeah it's bacon mushies get that down you then you go to the gym or meetings and then you've got another meal which will be like your main lunch of the day yeah should we just shove this all in the yeah, yeah. should i put this all onto that yeah, that should be sweet. And then is we just putting the steaks in? Um, on. Yeah. Um, yes, put the steaks. Yeah, we'll just put the steaks right. on now. Yeah. Uh, you've got a bit of olive oil here. Let me bang that on. Uh, that'll come on quite quickly. Sweet. We just want that smoking. So, for breakfast, then you're having yeah, so a massive version yeah. of what a normal person might yeah, eat. Yeah, that's that. And then. Then you've got um, straight into meetings and just probably weights. Is that like, when you say strategy meetings, is that to sort of go through yeah, what so happened just, last in the last uh, game? Or? It depends what day of the week it is, but if it's Monday, yeah. that'll be very much like a review meeting of that weekend's game. Yeah. So you'll be looking through like the clips, what you can do better, what we did well, like yeah. that sort of thing. Is that done as like a whole team or you just have the forwards in one room, backs in another room? Kind of like how they do in the um, NFL. Yeah, so yeah, you do one with the backs and the forwards. That'll be more like set piece orientated. Yeah. And then you'll do like a, a team sort of collective one. And then um, and then you're sort of done with that, straight to the gym, smash that out. And then you've got another meal, which will be something like a lamb saddle with sort of, if it's a Monday, Tuesday, usually there's no carbohydrates. It'll just be vegetables. So yeah. You'll get most of your carbs from like low glycemic stuff. But that's just for the most of the squad because a lot of guys are quite easy to get fat if they eat badly or eat too many carbs. <laughs> now that rugby's turning, sort of not turning more professional, but now there's particularly in like a BT sport putting more money. I actually did the, some of the research on it. Like the Premiership's now watching like 200 odd countries. Oh, really? I think we'll just do two at a time. Have you got a spatula? Yeah, in... Is there? is there a spatula there? No. There is one, definitely somewhere. I'll get you this one. Have you got the spatula? Oh, oh, no. okay. So we're going to cook these kind of fairly rare. So do you get to go out much? Like, I mean, I can compare a rugby player to some of the other athletes we've had in here. Like, some athletes 
have got to really, really, particularly on in their sort of on season, have to calorie count and can't eat what they want when they want. Do you find as a rugby player you're under a similar sort of yeah, but thing? It's, it's it's definitely still very much part of the culture. Yeah, like going out as a team, having a good time. Like rugby is very much an emotional game, so. If you can motivate your players to run into brick walls, yeah. they'll do it well for you. So I think it's pretty simple in that respect. But um, yeah, everyone does their own thing, you know mm. what I mean? Like some guys are more sort of, as long as you get your work done, the coaches are good with it. And sort of, That's they're part cool. of that era where that was the norm. So yeah. they understand it, do you know what I mean? Which yeah. Most coaches do anyway. Um, which one is it? Uh, that one. Do you know hotter or colder? A bit hotter that way, yeah. 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 So, we've got some steaks. Right, do you want to bring the pan over and put the last one on here? Alright. We'll just bang it on there and then we'll do the next bit. Okay. Boom. Awesome. And then... So this is just going to sit for a few minutes? Yeah. I just washed my hands good. Right, there we go. Okay. It smells delicious. Then, so what's the next step? We will probably smash these noodles on. And then we're yeah, I mean that better. pan's been on for a while. Yeah, that's great. Uh, cool. Should I just do one more? Do it. Chuck as many as you can in. They all fit. They all, they all fit. They'll all get eaten. And just let those steaks rest um, for a bit longer. Uh, yeah, once that's cooked, we'll cool them off and then we're pretty much done there. Do we need to do anything to the range? It doesn't need to be cooked. Uh, just eat no, cold. that's it, mate. That's it. You've diced it. We've prepped it. It's ready to go. We just need to um, probably add a few more Put herbs. Sauce. In. Yeah, sauce on. So we'll dice that up. Yeah. Shove that in. We'll cool that down a bit, and then we'll toss it all together. And then you just clean your plate up, and you're good to go. Cool. So we're going to dice up the steaks, chuck them in, and then we're going to add the dressing, and then we can plate up. We've boiled off the noodles, drained them. They're all cool and ready to go. Cool, right. Shall I give you a couple of steaks? You've yeah, got you give me two. Yeah. There's one. Maybe a big flat one as well. Yeah. Before that one falls on the floor. It's a great thing. It's going to be rare. Yummy. This does look good. You're getting a close up of this, Gene. So that's, um, that's the steak done, and then we'll just add some of this dressing in. We might not use quite all of it, but most of it. And it's good salad toss, isn't it? And then we'll just toss that up, yeah. There's a couple of spoons behind you. Yeah. I can't reach them because of the wire. Yeah, there's two big spoons. All right, I'll clear these out of the way, and I'll grab a, grab a plate. We'll just use your hands for the plate. If you're cooking at home, use your hands. If you're in a kitchen. Yeah. Cooking for a team. There we are. Put this out of the way. Just get that in. Mm. Now I think it's ready. Max, this looks delicious. Should we tuck in? I'll After you, you mate. After you. you. Sure? Yeah, you do the honours. This does look good. This really does look good. Grab some noodles. I should use the spoon. Let it out so I did it really easy. <laughs> mm. Oh goodness. That's so good. The sauce is really, really nice. Yeah, that's the key in it, getting the dressing right. Yeah. I mean that's so quick as well. If we yeah. weren't talking, that would it's, took yeah, it's 15, not much 20 minutes. Work at all. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Brilliant. Max, thank you for coming down. It's been a pleasure to have you in the kitchen. I've got sauces myself. Thank you as well. Thank you for watching. Subscribe below. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, take care. Awesome.